Street Fighter 2 is the most famous fighting game ever. I doubt there's anybody who doesn't know about this game. Before Street Fighter 2, there was Street Fighter 1, and that was a disaster. But Capcom learned from their mistakes, and in 1991, they've created a legend. It was released for pretty much anything. The only game that beat the Street Fighter 2 in sheer number of ports is probably Doom, that was made even for calculators. Over the time, there was about 15 billion versions and releases of Street Fighter 2, two most recognised being The World Warrior, which is the first released, and Champion Edition, which came after that. There are slight differences between the two. The major difference is a number of characters you can choose from. The World Warrior's got 8 basic characters you can choose from, and after you beat these 8, you fight against additional 4, let's say, bosses. In the Champion Edition you can again choose from the 8 basic characters, but also the 4 bosses you were fighting against in the World Warrior. Then there are minor changes in the graphics, and some moves have been revised and tuned up. That being said, some of the ports I've got here are based on the World Warrior and others on the Champion Edition. Mainly cause there was only one port made for some systems, so I had to mix them up. You need to know, I've captured all the footage in this video using emulators. First, I don't have all the hardware, and second, it shows much better how the game actually looks like, rather than being displayed on the telly using composite output or something. Now let's stop waffling about and let's have again that different ports of Street Fighter 2, from the worst to the best. Let's kick off with the Amstrad port, which was released in 1992 by Creative Materials, and it's, well, utter rubbish. I don't mind it being the ugliest port of them all, I don't mind the characters moving absolutely horrible, and I don't even mind there's practically no sound or music, but it's literally unplayable. Let's start with the main menu. You can choose only out of 4 characters instead of 8, there being Ryu, Bison, Guile and Ken. Then you can choose if the stage you're gonna be fighting in is gonna be random, or you can play in the character's own stage, I don't, I don't understand why this option is even there. Then you can choose who you wanna fight against. Well, fight. What's happening on the screen can't be described as fighting. There are two bunches of pixels standing against each other that from time to time change shape. What's rather interesting, however, the portraits used in the roster are from the Super Street Fighter 2. The game uses one button for attack and using one button for six button game is not ideal to say the least, and it perhaps wouldn't be such a pain if it actually worked. When you play in any game, you sort of expect it to work by pressing buttons on a controller or keyboard. Street Fighter 2 for Amstrad, however, is not that sort of game. Controlling your character is pretty much impossible. The gameplay consists of constant pressing whatever you feel proper at the time, which is never proper cause nothing makes sense in the game. Usually when you hit the enemy, you expect some sort of collision detection to be working. The hit usually doesn't connect when it clearly connects, and when it actually connects you do quite low damage for some reason, but the computer is able to obliterate you in a matter of seconds. There's no music in the game, just one sound that's used for pretty much everything. I wanted to know how the endgame looks like, but I wasn't able to defeat even the first character, so I gave up after some time. This is the worst port of them all. The game was ported to ZX Spectrum the same year by Tyatex Design, and since the hardware wasn't capable of displaying anything close to the original arcade machine, it doesn't look much better than the Amstrad port. Well, there's just two colours, but the characters look much better. There's also no music in the game except for the main menu, and what's quite interesting about that is that the music is not the classic Street Fighter 2 title music, but the ZX Spectrum port uses the music from the Bell Rock stage for some reason. Sounds are of course utterly horrible and sort of playing randomly, it's, it's weird.
The graphics, sounds and music aside, the problem with the game is pretty much the same as in the Amstrad case. It's simply unplayable. Again, it uses just one button so you don't have too many options to attack. The game's got about one frame per second and when you press the button, you can't be sure it's gonna do something and when it does something, you can't be sure your head's gonna connect even when it clearly connects. For this video, I had to suffer through this quote-unquote game until the end and I hated every minute of it. Most of the time, you have no idea what's going on or what just happened. It's an absolute rubbish and the game was really unnecessary to be made. I'm not sure which port is worse, this one or the Amstrad port, but the collision detection is a little bit better here. Another well done port is for NES. Made by Yokosoft in 1992, this game looks a bit better, sounds a bit better, plays a bit better, but there's still not enough to call this a good Street Fighter game, or a good game for the matter. You can choose out of only 4 characters, and you fight against only 4 characters as well. At least I reckon so, I never managed to beat all 4 with only 3 credits. To be honest, the graphics are shite even for an 8-bit NES, but at least it's got more frames per second, about 2. Music and sounds are average for an NES. I've recognised the music in jungle stage, but Gaio stage music is just a bunch of weird sounds, I wouldn't dare to call it a music. What's not average, however, is a collision detection, which is again virtually non-existent. Playing against the CPU is very frustrating, because all it does is whipping out special moves over and over and over again, and when you attempt to attack it always makes some sort of counter-attack that's almost always successful. When collision detection kicks in, that is. The game uses two buttons, one for punches and one for kicks. Also, unlike in the previous port, special moves are rather easy to use, but does it matter really? No it doesn't, the game's awful. Next is the Master System port which came out in 1997 and it was only available for Brazilian market. Made and published by Brazilian tech toy company. It looks much better than the port I showed you before, the Master System is still an 8-bit machine, so it's really not bad. Judging by the graphics alone, I'd consider this a Street Fighter game. Not a good Street Fighter game, but a Street Fighter game. At last, each stage has its own music, and the music is not actually bad for an 8-bit machine. It's recognisable Street Fighter 2 music. The sounds on the flip side are absolute rubbish. What surprised me though was this. You win! An actual recording. This port is a mishmash of a couple of Street Fighter 2 games. You can choose from 8 characters, which seems like the World Warrior, or reckon it's cause of the cartridge capacity, but you can choose from some of the bosses, which seems like Champion Edition, and the portraits in the select screen are apparently from Super Street Fighter 2. I understand the console is just an 8-bit machine, so the graphics, music and sounds can't compare to the 16-bit sisters. I sort of understand it's a cash cow, they wanted to milk the franchise by releasing it on a dead console. I would forgive the port, all of that, but what I can't forgive is the actual gameplay. It's pretty much the same rubbish as all the ports before, and since this port is for the Master System, it uses two buttons, which doesn't really matter in the end. When you connect and apparently hit the opponent, it makes a hit sound, but sometimes it doesn't register any damage, it's a prime example of a great collision detection. Moreover, it's pretty hard to use special moves, they just don't work most of the time. Also, for some reason it's stupid fast, the game's just awful. Another jewel of a game is for Amiga from Creative Materials. To be honest, I didn't think I would find so many crappy ports. Graphics are not bad. Well, the single frames are not when nothing's moving. When the characters start to move, it's a completely different story. One frame per move is not exactly presentable or playable fighting game. Controls are again lousy and made only for two buttons, one for punches and one for kicks. 
special moves are very hard to perform and blocks are not working most of the time for some reason. So you have to rely on pressing whatever you can to try to hit the enemy, which is almost impossible because when you press the button, you can't be sure it's gonna do what you intended. The collision detection is a tad better than what you've seen in the previous part, but still far cry from good. AI is again quite stupid, and by stupid I mean it won't allow you to hit the opponent. I had to set the difficulty to easiest to be able to finish the game. The music is at the creative materials level, which means atrocious. Amiga has such a great sound system, so how can somebody cook it up like this is beyond me. The tracks themselves are recognizable, but the arrangement is just terrible. And of course somebody was too lazy to arrange all the original tracks, so you've got just three throughout the entire game. And the sounds are, well, alright. This board was made again by Creative Materials and we already know we can expect some massive shite. For one, it looks much better than the port for the Master System or Amiga, mainly because of the better hardware, but then the characters start to move and you know the shit hit the fan. It's got one frame per move and two frames per second, pretty much like the Amiga port, and it's again unplayable. Hitting your opponent is a matter of chance rather than anything else, you can't be sure the character performs the move you told them to perform. You can hardly be talking about AI cause it's non-existent, the CPU is just running and jumping about and the terrible frame rate makes it even more terrible cause you can't be sure your character's gonna do what you want. Moreover, it's again made only for two buttons. The music's not utter rubbish, quality wise, but there are just two tracks randomly repeating throughout the game. The Atari ST was a paragon of music composition at the time and as such it's quite embarrassing the Street Fighter port is in this sorry state. The sounds are rather terrible but not as terrible as the ports before except for the Amiga port. What's also quite annoying is when the Atari plays a sound it cuts off the music, it's unfortunately hardware limitation of the Atari ST. I'd call it a time with Amiga, both are equally horrible. I sort of misspoke at the beginning when I said the Amstrad port is the ugliest. No, this one is. Moreover, it uses only one button, so why have I put it in front of all of those, you ask? Well, it's sort of playable. Don't get me wrong, it's still far cry from enjoyable, but the characters at least do what they're supposed to do when you press the only button. This is Creative Materials best port yet. And the word best is used very loosely here. What I hate most about this port is its quote-unquote soundtrack. In the original Street Fighter 2, every stage has its own music of course, but hey, every stage has the same annoying music, so the game is pretty much torture, have a listen. And what's absolutely mental about the music is when you finish the game and watch an endgame video, it uses the music from the character stage. What the bloody hell, why? It's Ken's stage in this case if you didn't recognize the character. All of these ports must have been made by people who never played the original game in the first place or never programmed any game ever before. I don't understand how any of these could have been approved for release, it's beyond me. All of these ports are gutter trash. 
There are two World Warrior PC ports, one is again made by Creative Materials and it shows it's an absolute rubbish and the other one is fan made by some Korean bloke. Let's start with the absolute rubbish one cause it's the worst of the two. The graphics are quite good, I'd call it very similar to the original arcade, however, the game being made by Creative Materials, it's, you guessed it right, unplayable. It's pretty much the same as the rest of the ports made by Creative Materials, but for you to understand how frustrating the game can be, let's break down the negatives, cause there are no positives in the game. I do understand why the port for the Master System, for instance, uses just two buttons, it's quite obvious, innit? But why the blood hell would you use the same shit for the PC where you can choose out of 50 or so? What's really messed up though, both buttons do exactly the same thing, so in the end you're down to one. And when you press the button, you can't be sure what your character gonna do, the controls make no sense. Even though the game looks pretty much like the original arcade, the characters moves like necessary frames the original game has for some reason. Again, the games go like one frame per move, which makes the game very choppy, so you're unable to fight properly. Hitting the opponent the way you want is next to impossible. For music, you can choose between a standard FM synth and the Roland MT32. Does it matter? No. For some unknown reason, they've put Kent stage music to a title screen and the title screen music in every single stage. You listen to the same shit over and over again and it's really annoying, so it doesn't really matter whether you've chosen the FM synth or the MT32. Moreover, the arrangement is horrible of course. There are no sounds or I wasn't able to get them working, either way it's terrible. This port was made by some Korean bloke and even though this time the sounds are working, they are very low quality. Are this port uses only FM synthesis for music, but this time every stage has its own tune. So far so good. It's however far cry from good. Some themes are unrecognizable and others are, well, quite bad. The graphics are well worse than the of the port from Creative Materials, but it's got far more frames per move, so the characters move more smoothly. Not smooth enough though. The game uses all six buttons and all moves work, which makes it eons apart from the other PC port. That being said, controlling the characters is a lot better, but not good enough though. The game ends when you defeat the eight basic characters, and there are no bosses, as they should be. The AI is rather bad, all it does is using special moves left and right and all you need to do is to throw fireballs. Despite its flaws, this port is a little bit better. The video has become somehow too long, so I'm gonna split it into two parts. This port wraps up the first part, obviously. So, happy new year and see you in the part two in a week or so. Cheers. Claim. <laughs>